Good evening. I'm Judy Dench, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Graham Norton Show. <laughs> of the year when things go bump in the night. Although, that might just have been Simon Cowell falling down the stairs. <laughs> oh, Uncle Simon. Oh, no, terrible. Simon even missed being on the X Factor. Tell you, some people will do anything to stay at home and watch Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> you know he did. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a week of sleaze, hasn't it? A week of sleaze. There have been so many allegations. I mean, people's careers are collapsing like a house of dominoes. <laughs> Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> journalists. There's so many now. I mean, journalists are struggling to come up with enough words to describe all this inappropriate behaviour. You know, touchy feely, handsy, sleazy, spacey. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but who's on my sofa tonight? And we've got five huge stars from the new movie Murder on the Orange Express. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Look at them all. Oh, dear, not only has someone been killed, the train service, they have to stand. <laughs> Terrible. Wait till they find out the toilets are blocked. <laughs> Tell you, I'm looking forward to the sequel, Murder on the Replacement Bus Service. <laughs> <laughs> Five hours long. But it, it truly is one of the great Agatha Christie whodunits. And, and by the way, if you really want to know who the murderer is, apparently Prue Leith has just tweeted it. <laughs> But first, it's all aboard the Orient Express. Ooh, ooh. Let's meet the stars. He's the voice of Olaf in Frozen and the scene stealing the foo in Beauty and the Beast. It's Josh Gad, everybody! <laughs> Returns and what lies beneath. It is the fabulous Michelle Pfeiffer! Jack Sparrow, Edward Scissorhands, Willy Wonka, just some of the extraordinary characters this man has brought to life. Please welcome Johnny Depp! He's here! Screen actors and one of our all time favorite guests. It is the one and only Dame Judy Dench. He's the man in charge of it all. What do you borrow himself and the director of the film? It's Sir Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> pretending to be nice to you, and the film's finished. <laughs> What's the point now? Uh, this, this is a good week, right? Yeah. That, the more stars than there are in heaven. That oh. is that's <laughs> something. Uh, so, welcome. Welcome to you all. Very nice to see you all. Thank you very much. And um, it seems like, just watching you all backstage, it seems like it was a happy train. Was it was a very happy yeah. train. Yeah. It was ve for the most part. Judy was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> She's a troublemaker. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She's a troublemaker and always has been. Uh, because um, I, I, I've seen you in interviews, Michelle. Uh, you often say oh, when they say poor who thing. Would, when, you, when, you, when, you, when they when they say who would you like to work with, mm. you often say often, Dame Judi often, Dench. Yeah. So was it everything you hoped? Um, <laughs> I, I, did you do you remember I cried when I met you? Do you remember I got a little puddly? Yeah, Aww. I did. And then I wanted to curl up in her lap. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you didn't. <laughs> Where are you going? What's happening? The definition of puddly. 
And then, now, because, Josh, you, yeah. apparently, you thought you might break the ice with... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the first day, the first day she came into the trailer, nobody would approach her. And so, of course, me being the idiot that I am, I went up to her, and do you remember what I said? I looked at her and I go, damn Judy Dench, more like, damn Judy Dench. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. I'll never work in Hollywood again. <laughs> on a set, you're the director, you're in charge. Yeah. But there's a lot of high status going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So how did you corral your galaxy of stars? Well, with great difficulty, actually. I mean, and, uh, <laughs> well, you've already seen, I mean, very little. Very, that was, this is a normal morning at work. <laughs> 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 That's how it would start on a, on a Monday morning. I remember. I, I remember they put us on the train and they wouldn't let us leave. That was on it. That's how they yes. corralled us. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was allowed on it. Nobody else we was had allowed to on it. Had to use the oh, right. Was we it not a toilet on the train? No. No. That's poor planning. Uh, but it makes the scenes very exciting. <laughs> and tense. <laughs> it keeps the suspense really, really active. So the film, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, uh, it opens everywhere tonight. And uh, it is the most phenomenal cast. I mean, there's all of you guys, and then there's Penelope Cruz, Jack Jackby, all these people uh, all standing around. There's there, is that you there, Yeah, that's Josh? me, right. You can... <laughs> if you have binoculars, you can just make me out in the back of that poster. So, you, you got all the stars, mm -hmm. but, of course, you know, main man, Hercule Poirot. Yeah. How difficult was it to cast that? <laughs> uh, well, I talked to the actor for a long time. Uh, Did you see anyone else? Only in the mirror, in that case. Uh, <laughs> no, it was... Uh, you know, when you direct... Uh, directors and detectives, I mean, in theory, they're both you're looking for the truth, uh, so, in theory, that, that uh, double job is the, is the perfect marriage on something like this. Yeah, and something like Hercule Poirot's moustache is so famous, and you've gone quite left field with your moustache. Yes, yes. Is this a moustache that has ever appeared in nature? Um, <laughs> no, uh, although I must say sometimes wearing that moustache felt like you were sort of French kissing a badger. <laughs> Uh, it, was, it was a challenging piece of face furniture. It's it was, epic. It is, it is. It's, it's how much of it is you? Uh, I tried, well, as you can tell, I'm already starting my sort of Movember attempt to uh, moustache it up. Um, uh, I have to uh, confess a fol follicle failure. I, I, I attempted for, for, for months to grow and tease it. So, uh, uh, what do you do? You, do you, you, you sometimes grow quite a thick beard. Do you sort of yes. tease it out? Do you pull it? How do you get... You get that great I big... Tease sort of... my beard. No. <laughs> You're so shaggy. <laughs> Naturally, you've got, a, you've got a big follicle, a big follicle it's one capability. It's the few things I can do is grow a beard. Okay, yeah. Right. Learned well, it in drama school. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> are you, what about you? Are you, are you can you I grow a beard? Oh, you're talking to Johnny. I want... <laughs> I have beard envy. I, I do. Yeah, I yeah. grow about seven or eight hairs on this side. <laughs> but, mm, maybe about five over here. <laughs> and then, uh, just whatever sort of falls in between is left. And, Josh, you have a moustache as well in the film. Unfortunately, yes, I do. Is this, uh, is that's this real? It. <laughs> that's it. My, my kids were terrified. No, it's good. It's good in the context of early 20th century. Uh, when I'm wearing modern clothes, I look like a pedophile. <laughs> and walking down the streets, you would see people clutching their children walking away. Because nobody wears that moustache in the wild anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Upsetting. They really actually when you think I can you, see that. They really like, kids would not talk to me. That's a true story. They were like, "You daddy, take it off your face." <laughs> like, Mr. Brand is paying me too much to do that. <laughs> and uh, Judy, if I ask you who you play, will you remember? Uh, Princess Natalia Dragomirov. Okay. Yeah, right on it. Who's she? Is that it? Very good. Oh, goodness knows. <laughs> <laughs> Some bird that sat around with a lot of jewellery. <laughs> it's a bit more than that, you know. It's the, it's the handkerchief, and, you know, the kind of maid. Olivia Coleman's the maid. You know, you now you're telling, kind of, you're telling you me now. She had dogs there. Jewellery through the movie. Christ, this is what I had to deal with. This is what I had to deal with. Amateurs, bloody amateurs. Uh, let's have a special taste. Uh, this is Murder on the Orange Express. Would you mind if I join you? You're the world-famous detective. Hercule Poirot. Avenger of the innocent. Is that what they call you? And you are innocent? Huh. You're fun. A passenger has murdered. 
The murderer is on the train with us now, and every one of you is a suspect. <laughs> so, let us catch our killer. A man was rummaging around my cabin. You are certain it was a man? I know what it feels like to have a man in my bedroom. Did he have enemies? Oh, Pick a number. The real killer is right here. What are you people? We are surrounded by lies. I'm sleeping here, where everyone can see me, and I can see everyone. Oh, takes up the knife. Cannot trust no one. No one. I mean, it, it's a re it is, you say, it's a real train. You are on an actual train. It, it didn't go anywhere, the train. Well, we, we went uh, in order to get amazing sort of spectacle shots to New Zealand and France and Switzerland and Malta. Uh, but we also went to Surrey, um, <laughs> where we... Uh, the Alps of Surrey, uh, where we rebuilt the, the Orient Express, five-hole carriages, and we, 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 put, we put the train up on a massive 15-metre-high uh, viaduct, and we built a mountain behind it, and then we worked out how to move the train and stop the train, and, and it was pretty convincing, wasn't it? I thought it was incredibly good. I would, yes, I, uh, I think I, I moved about eight feet in the whole, in the whole film. If you, can, if you can watch the film and believe that, I mean, really. No, it is incredible. It's fantastic. Well, people, actually, you, I, you, you were the first one who got motion sickness, weren't you? I did? Yeah. Well, true. because <laughs> everyone's doing that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was the first morning when I told Judy she didn't have to do that. We'd make it work from below the train. <laughs> she was very good to see that she could. That's the end of training for you, see? So we can all do that. But now, Michelle Fiverr, you thought you weren't going to like being stuck on a train with everybody. No. I don't like boats because I can't get off. And um, they didn't tell us that we wouldn't be able to leave the train until we were there. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, the, the time just kind of <clears throat> flew, and Josh was incredibly entertaining, and you would do your Penelope Cruz. Mm, I do a mean Penelope. And then I, he would I, do Javier, and then he would yeah. do a fight between them. It was really <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that, because I was always Did, did Penelope find it funny? I didn't see um, it. Oh, Josh. No, Penelope, um, uh, uh, she found it the opposite of funny, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, she would, she would always look at me, and she would literally say, is that really the way you look at what I sound like? <laughs> sound to you and then I would do Javier and I'd be like Penelope don't make a big deal about what <laughs> leave the poor fat boy alone <laughs> it's okay and she just never never break a smirk at me. <laughs> and, and so you're dealing with all the actors but then uh, Judy you've got two dogs is it two dogs or three dogs two, two dogs, dogs two dogs and were they nice lovely one white dog and one black dog. Nice. Uh, and Olivia <laughs> Coleman. <laughs> <I have. laughs> Olivia Coleman was dressed in black from head to foot. So I gave her the black dog. <laughs> I got a white dog. <laughs> Olivia didn't think the dogs liked her. She didn't think no. the black dog liked her. I turned them against her. <laughs> <laughs> you and all the treats. <laughs> uh, now, as the poster makes very clear in this film, everyone is a suspect. Everyone is a suspect, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, and there's a lot of that in the film, in terms of actors, of uh, either, you know, looking at each other suspiciously or not looking <laughs> guilty or, you know, there's a lot... So, and because that happens a lot, were there ways that you rang the changes? Did you, or did you just kind of go, do it again? Or well, I, I heard about ways. I, I heard about ways. I heard about ways brought over from the Americas. <laughs> brought over from the Americas by characters like Mr. Gale. Perhaps you would like to expand. Uh, well, there's the English classical tradition, <laughs> there's Shakespeare, uh, there's a theatre, and then, and then just there's what? <laughs> well, there's, there's the who farted look. <laughs> and basically, on the train, there was this scene where we're all look. Ken's direction does is everybody look suspiciously at everybody else <laughs> and everybody's like <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Michelle and I looked at Judy and I looked at Leslie and Daisy and I go all we really have to do is wonder who just farted <laughs> and it'll make our job so much easier and that's literally what you see on screen <laughs> Okay, tell you what, let's press.
practice, let's practice your yeah. suspicious poker faces. Yeah. So you're suspicious, but you didn't do it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just imagine someone on the sofa has just let one rip. <laughs> okay, already you're terrible, Ken. You're useless. <laughs> you're the but, detective. But someone has let one rip, but I didn't. <laughs> 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 that's, what, that's what's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, focus everyone. Okay, here we go, here we go. So, somebody, somebody has let one drop. Is it Josh? He looks like a farter. He suspects Ken. Ken had a big lunch. Michelle has never farted in her life. <laughs> <laughs> Judy's smelling it really strong. <laughs> John is channeling a bloodhound. <laughs> Or is it the host? I like that end. Now, what we, you tell you what, sorry to interrupt, but the, the, what we, these are all incredibly competitive games players. I, 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 it's right to say that, isn't it? I'm absolutely. You look at me yeah. as if I, that, that's all. <laughs> so, this is the worst. It loves it. So, anything charades, crosswords, uh, uh, you know, pub quiz, m movie trivia, and whatever. And what I did find to just get their attention, um, you know, although they you were had a quiz, you and we did ex a quiz. exactly. We had a quiz. I'll try this out in the audience. Sorry, it's a bit of a sort of bit of a cryptic one, but this is what I remember doing it on the day. I wonder if you can remember who got it, who got it. They were a bit noisy. We had to we had to get a move on. We had a scene involving all of them. I said, okay, hold on. Then uh, the person who answers this question. After we say cut, gets 20 quid. OK, it's a lateral, it's cryptic clue. What German refusal produces a musical connection in cinema between Penelope Cruz and Judi Dench? Nine. 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 Correct! Nine. Wow! Well done. Well done. Well done. Excellent. You're um, not getting well, 20 quid. Well done. <laughs> Do you remember who got that? It was, it was, because I, I remember one. So I gave that question before I said action, and they all went like that. So talk about, talk about being serious. I mean, um, it was an unbelievably tense scene was it there. Willem? Was it Willem? It wasn't Willem. It was Leslie Odom Jr. Oh, Leslie. Who oh, right. practically okay. climbed over Willem in the phone <laughs> to get the twenty quid. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was like, it was so craven. But the Very quiz is now. See, I can imagine <laughs> Judy Dench and Michelle Pfeiffer top of the class in quizzes. Why do I think Johnny Depp? You're not very good in quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> I was until I was about th three. <laughs> <laughs> and something changed. So I don't know. But uh, the film's over now, so Josh, you can speak freely. Yeah. You hated the quizzes, didn't you? I hated the quizzes because most of them were Shakespeare, and <laughs> it brought. I mean, everybody, all the Brits. There were like three Americans. Yeah, I and, hated it too. And we were, <laughs> we were literally like, ask a Back to the Future question. <laughs> 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 Kind of a Star Warsy person. Josh. I am. And yeah. poor Daisy Ridley. Boy. I think you made her life <laughs> hell. I did. I uh, did. <laughs> did she crack ever? No, no. The Disney lawyers got to her before I did. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't give me anything. I tried. I mean, I, I utilized some very powerful friends, including Dame Judy. De <laughs> Damn, Judy. <laughs> and we, we tried, but she wouldn't crack. What, you asked her questions? No, certainly not. <laughs> I, now he says it, but I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there is photographic <laughs> evidence. You you on, there is, you there's photographic evidence. Sarah. This is you for some... <laughs> <laughs> Are you a character from Star Wars? I'm not sure. Lawrence of Arabia, it's one of those. You, you sort of draped yourself in a, in a thing. Do, can you explain that, Josh? It, it was magic, is what it was. <laughs> um, she, she looked at us, Daisy and I knocked on her door, and we go, would you mind doing this video with us, asking Daisy these questions from Star Wars? And she looked at us and she said, I would love to, 
but I haven't the faintest idea what Star Wars is. <laughs> <laughs> But she did it, and she she should be cast. She looks like a Jedi Knight. She's incredible. Well, there's, there's another one coming, so yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now, in terms of behaving, and you know, and you were all very professional, but the two of you have a very bad reputation, don't you, in terms of corpsing and giggling on sets? It's uh, well, it's no, no you no, too. It's you. It's you. <laughs> oh, I was oh. never in trouble till I met you. Uh. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Also, she's one of those ones. So is Jonathan Depp there, who who can be uh, who could be. We we had a scene also in the in the in the movie where we eat together, and both uh, uh, Johnny and Judy can do the thing of either saying something amusing or paraphrasing or eating something or making an unfortunate noise, twinkle but not laugh, or absolutely <laughs> no when the camera's on you. So they'll do the you know if there's a squelchy sound from a cake that sounds like another kind of sound, uh, <laughs> that'll happen when suddenly when it's your close up. Um, and so uh, I absolutely, I point, I point the finger back at uh, these two troublemakers. Yeah. But no, but the two of you, now, Judy, you've worked with Ken. Is it ten oh, times? So many times, it's not worth going into it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have ten, worked ten, ten times, ten times over, over thirty years, wow. uh, including when I asked her uh, about being in this. She was the first person I asked to be on the train, and she very kindly said yes before I'd finished uh, the sentence. And, and it was uh, that was very thrilling because it made a big difference to, to everybody else. But uh, I used to go and talk to her about it in our dressing room at the uh, Garrick Theatre, where we, we were doing Shakespeare's play, The Winter's Tale. And going into Judy's dressing room was always, always like going into the bookies. Because uh, you, li <laughs> you like your horses, don't you? <laughs> you do, you like so, <laughs> She does, so she's there. I'm studying Shakespeare like a wild thing. She's bent over the sporting life, you know. <laughs> <in> the, <laughs> Checking out the free turn at Linkfield. <laughs> and we were having a chat. I saw, I go in there one night, having a chat. I said, So it's very exciting. May have Johnny, Johnny Depp maybe in the show, and Michelle Pfeiffer is always excited. Josh gets She said, What's thrilling? She was sitting there with her, her dressing gown on. We get our call over the town. Oh, Mr. Brennan, Miss Dench, you're, you're, you're on. Uh, so she gets up, we continue talking, great, so we're going to build a train, and it's all going to be fantastic. We get into the wings, ready to go on, there's 30 seconds to go. She throws off her dressing gown, and there's nothing on from below the waist. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, I had the quickest of looks, just to... <laughs> I, can, I can confirm, like the song, there is nothing like a dame. <laughs> But we then, so we then, so, uh -huh. so Judy's uh, uh, dress had to run all the way back to the dressing room, come back on with, the, with her skirt, and then she walked on like that. And then all the things she used to do, like that, she couldn't do. So, uh, so it was like doing the rest of the scene with somebody uh, acting in semaphore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drafted, you. I'm surprised you didn't notice. <laughs> I was quite surprised. <laughs> <laughs> likes her horses. She likes her horses. <laughs> because now, because uh, uh, Johnny, you have worked with uh, Dave Judy before. Yes, twice, twice before. Yeah. Well, once properly in Chocolat, and once in twice. <laughs> <laughs> The second time, the second time it was a blink and you weren't credited the second time, were you? It was you? improper. Was I not credited? I don't think you were. Excuse me, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> no, as far as I know, do you know, it, it's a blink and you'll miss it, bit in, uh, I think it's the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean. No. I think it's the fourth one, uh, <laughs> but this is this is the two of you uh, sharing a carriage for the first time. Here sharing a moment. What he said. No, certainly not. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Because now, because uh, uh, Johnny, when you talk about creating characters, you often, like, for instance, Willy Wonka, you talk about the what it kind of inspired you, what you the, what you were going for with that. Yeah, I was sort of looking for a combination of a a, a, a children's <laughs> show host that's a little uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> And then I thought about what if George W. Bush were very, very, very stoned. <laughs> 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 I 
and uh, those, those, those thoughts collided. <laughs> and I ended up in a Prince Valiant wig for a <laughs> Edward Scissorhands, that sounds like a quite a sweet combination. And well, yes, yeah. Scissorhands was, I mean, when, when, I, when Scissorhands arrived for me to read, I, I, I was, I, you know, I thought, you know, this will never be for me. And I read the thing and it just, it just flattened me. I mean, it just, it, it just destroyed me. Mm. You, you base a character like that, something that's so, so incredibly pure. I mean, that was, um, that was a dog that I'd had as a, as a kid, Scissorhands, and, uh, and uh, uh, my nieces and ba just babies, newborns. And... and those characters, they really, it's incredible the way they've, they've lost, I don't know if you saw this, but Halloween. Uh, Lady Gaga this year was Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. And then she's, so out, and sweet. she's out and about and she bumped into a Jack Sparrow. <laughs> 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 what are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds? And you, you do sometimes, you do do the dressing up as Jack Sparrow. You seem to like that. I just run around the house like that. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't you, you, know. go, you, you, didn't you go to Disneyland? I mean, that must have caused a sensation. I did, I did, I did something that uh, I, as, as soon as they... they you know, pirates was going to happen. I thought, how great would it be to be able to have the opportunity to stand there as some sort of animatronic until the people come by, and then you start screaming and <laughs> <laughs> you know, scare them into a mischief. <laughs> you know what I mean, so <clears throat> you know, all these years later, I got the chance to do it. So I was very excited. You know, these boats are going to come. Around the corner, and and and, and um, <laughs> I, they they just sort of looked at me as they were coming around, and I'm frozen, and I went, "Boy, <laughs> what are you looking at?" And then, <laughs> Nothing. <man. laughs> you, know, you know what I got? All of the iPhones <laughs> in the world going, "Wow." <laughs> wow, that's a pretty good animatronic. <laughs> it was one of the proudest moments of my life. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Josh, when you come to do something like uh, Frozen, uh, I know. Uh, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, was that character drawn? Was the was Olaf drawn already? It, it, it's. The first day you get there to record, uh, I remember the directors saying three words to me. Innocence, naivete, mm -hmm. and uh, love. Those were the three things that they said to me. And I immediately thought about my daughter, who was two years old. And the way she looked at me with this googly eyes was Olaf. It was, oh, everything was a question, even when it wasn't a question. Mm -hmm. I love you. I, you know, <laughs> can I get more food now? Like, it was like that kind of stuff. And that just seemed so right mm. for that little guy. Like, this just sort of newfound, almost like Edward Scissorhands. Like, you're new to the world. And was it that daughter who then became obsessed by the movie? Oh, yeah. She became unhealthily obsessed for a good couple of months. <laughs> uh, she once <laughs> looked at me. <laughs> so weird. She was making all of these, like, grumbling noises in the playroom. And I go in and I go, Ava, are you okay? And she goes, Daddy, walk away. My powers are too strong. <laughs> Powers are too strong. <laughs> Calling an exorcist. <laughs> wow. uh, here's the thing. Uh, not just acting. Michelle Pfeiffer, a woman of many talents. You no, stop it now. It's, uh, unless, unless, uh, are you method actors? Has someone actually done that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good. I actually found it. Uh, you, you, uh, you sing. You sing the. Now, what is it called when the song's at the end? Just the end song. The end titles. End title song. song. The end title song. Yeah. yeah. I do. I do. And this is a new song. It's a new song that 
Ken Bronner wrote the lyrics Patrick too. Doyle wrote the music for the movie, and there's a Jeez. wonderful theme inside it. And, uh, and out of a, a beautiful bit of acting that they all do, but this particular bit belonged to Miss Pfeiffer, there's this uh, uh, song that came out of it called Never Forget, which uh, Michelle uh, sings very beautifully. And we know you can sing from Fabulous Baker Boys and, and Hairspray and, and Grease Tune and things, but, uh, but you're, you're now in a song. When did you find out... That uh, oh. when did you find out that your name was in like one of the biggest songs of the last few years? Um, I think somebody emailed me, and well, f first it was that Riptide song, and then the Bruno Mars one came out, and I'm like, well, what's going on? So this is Uptown <laughs> Funk. <laughs> Uptown but, Funk. No, because it's right at the beginning. And I'm a huge and, uh, fan. We just play it now. This is. Going... But, but did they ask your permission? I suppose no, they don't need to. No, no, I don't think they have to. I don't think they have to. I mean, I was incredibly flattered. I didn't... Yeah, it was very cool. It was a little embarrassing at times. You know, I'm in carpool with the kids, and the song <laughs> comes on, and my son's like... Okay. <laughs> 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 or I'm in exercise class, and the song comes on, and... <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's in, I, and I love the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good. I know. <laughs> Judy's like, what the hell? What's that song? No, she's mad because originally it was Judy Dench, that white gold. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to music, there is someone on this couch who can really spit some bars. Um, <laughs> I am, of course, looking at you, Dame Judy Dench. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Your collaboration with Lethal Bizzle. It has set the oh, rap dear. world on fire. Has it? Yes! That's that smell. The rap world on fire. <laughs> <laughs> He asked if I'd, he could teach me to rap, and I said, sure. And so you, you rock up and he... Well, I tried. You did it! I mean, have you well, guys all seen this? You must have all seen <coughs> yes. this. Have you, have you all seen this? No. I have not. Oh, you've not, not seen this? It. Oh, oh, this is uh, the, the rap stylings <laughs> of Lethal <laughs> Bizzle and Dame Judy Jones. <laughs> all right, are we good to go? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. How? Yeah, I'm G50. How? If you don't know about me, how? May I ask someone quickly? How? Yeah, I'm. How? Yeah, I'm. How? If you don't know about me, how? May I ask someone quickly? How? One more time, let's go. How? Yeah, I'm G50. How? If you don't know about me, how? May I ask someone quickly? How? Yeah, I'm Pow. Do you know? How? Yeah, I'm G50. How? If you don't know about me, how? May I ask someone quickly? How? Yeah, I'm. Well, another musical performance. Uh, this uh, Grammy Award-winning singer's latest album has made her one of the biggest uh, pop names of 2017. Here performing Los Angeles, it is St. Vincent! <laughs>
There you go. Have a seat, too. So, uh, St. Vincent, but chatting your Annie. Sure, please. Uh, that is uh, off the album, which is called uh, Mass Seduction. There's the front of it. Yes. Um, now, <laughs> it, it's, un <laughs> you know, it's unfortunate you dropped something just as they were taking a picture. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but in fact, that's not even you, is it? I, I'm sorry to say, because it is a wonderful behind. It's beautiful. Yeah, I know. It's not me. Oh. But but it wasn't. Uh, it could have been me. It could have been you. Yes. Uh, I mean, well. Which begs the question: Why isn't it you? <laughs> it was a serendipitous moment in a photo shoot, and she just happened to be, you know, looking for something. Looking <laughs> for <laughs> something. And uh, it just seemed like the right picture to sum yeah. up the album. Yeah. It's and Josh. It's, isn't it's, it gorgeous? It's yeah. Josh. Yeah. It's what? Johnny just keeps looking at me going, it's you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's Johnny. I don't want to be there, I figured you might as well come through now. Yeah, he's super tough. He's super tough. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Not content with the, the, the singing, the songwriting, the touring, you found time for some inventing. Now, was that one of your inventions you were playing just then? It was. I designed a guitar. Ooh. Yes, that guitar. Yes, yeah. I designed a guitar that I like to say is gender inclusive. It's incredibly ergonomic for any gender. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were old guitars not? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I'm, uh, I've been playing guitar for a long time, and I've been performing for a long time, so... And I'm a smallish person, so I can't... I don't want a big, heavy guitar. I love a 70s Les Paul, but they're so heavy. They're prohibitively heavy. So I designed a guitar um, with a smaller frame, maybe, in mind. Yeah. And a, and a rock monster tone. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice. They, can you buy them? You can, yeah. Oh. There you go. Yeah. That's, Chris yeah. That's Christmas sorted. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess what it is under the tree, then, Judy. But... <laughs> It's going to be a St. Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for doing that. That looked beautiful. I loved the look of that performance at the Lion of uh, St. Vincent, everybody. Yeah. Uh, nearly it, but uh, we do have time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Greg. Greg, lovely. And what do you do, Greg? Um, I've just started a recruitment business with two friends of mine. OK, very good. Uh, recruiting people to do what? Um, accountants um, into retail. Businesses. Wow! Yeah, fun guy. Buzzy, buzzy, buzzy. Oh, the brainstorming that went into that. Uh, okay, Greg, uh, off you go with your story. Okay. Um, I'm a massive rugby league fan, and once a year my team plays on TV. 
Um, one Saturday, I sat down ready for my team to play and we scored a try and I jumped up in between my lounge, lounge and my kitchen. I smashed my head on the beam. Um, I completely conked myself out. I had no idea what was going on. I came round and my housemates above me in tears, crying on the phone to the ambulance saying, um, oh, you're right, there's blood pouring out of your head. And I was like, no, I'm not. Um, and uh, <laughs> he, he, calls, he calls the ambulance and they say, look, you've got 20 minutes, keep him awake um, and we'll be there as soon as possible. So we wait and we wait and we wait and the doorbell rings um, and he's like, right, the ambulance is here. So he runs to the door um, and opens the door and it's actually an estate agent. Um, and he's got an open house that morning organized by a landlord. <laughs> Um, and I'm laid there with blood everywhere in the middle of the lounge. Um, <laughs> the, um, the estate agent says, look, I don't care, we can go in, we'll just ignore the casualty. <laughs> so, eight, eight couples um, walked into the, the lounge diner to find me on the floor with blood pouring out of my head. Um, and um, they just carried on their business quite normally. And one of them sort of stepped over me and actually looked at the cooker. Um, while they struggled over me. Um, I looked up and they said, um, oh, darling, they've got gas hobs. That's really, really useful, isn't it? <laughs> um, and I'm still laying there and there's still blood pouring out of my head while this is happening. So, um, thankfully, they didn't sell the house that morning. <laughs> oh, it had no ending, the story. <laughs> There's a bit of a state agent. I like the way he was using the term lounge diner <laughs> throughout his story. I was straddling the line down. Uh, okay, who's up next? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Lisa. Lisa. And uh, where are you from, Lisa? I'm from Kew. Kew Gardens? Yes. Oh, lovely. Homeless, <laughs> she's homeless. <laughs> and what do you do there? I'm an estate agent. <laughs> Kitchen. I know, is there blood on the soles of her shoes? <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that last story? Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the sale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all right, Lisa, let's see if you can top that. Uh, off you go with your story. Yes, when I was younger, I used to live um, in, on the Abergeldy estate in, in Scotland, a neighbouring Balmoral, um, the Queen's Scottish home. <laughs> And one day I was on the estate when the Queen was in residence and walking and we, we knew, being local, we knew a lot of the staff. So we thought we'd pop in the back door of Balmoral Castle and just have a cup of tea and catch up with them. And neither, perfect timing, the Queen had just finished afternoon tea and all the royal cakes were in the kitchen so we absolutely feasted on the cakes. However, the bell rang. It was the Queen. She had an unexpected guest. All the cakes had gone, though, um, and uh, needless to say, her butler was absolutely furious with us. Needless to say. One more, Somehow. one more, okay, one more. <laughs> this is the one, this is the one. People have come from abroad for this, come on. <laughs> Okay, here we go, here we go. This is the one, this is the one, this is the one. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Robert. Robert. Uh, Robert or Robin? No, Robert. Robert, right, very good. <laughs> and uh, uh, what do you do, Robert? Uh, I've got a little company, we do kitchens and we fit kitchens. Oh, okay, very good. Off you go, Robert. Okay, um, in my teens, I had a girlfriend and her uh, father was a strict Catholic. He hated me with a vengeance. <laughs> so it's Christmas Eve, his fa the father says to my girlfriend, uh, we're going out, you're staying in. So she says, I'm only staying in to babysit the brother if uh, Robert can come round. So he finally agrees, I come round, they go out, the lights go down, the movie goes on, the lights come up, they come back. The mother says, oh, I'll make everybody a cup of tea. So we sit down and have a cup of tea, the dog comes in, sits in the middle of the lounge, starts coughing, coughs up, all of a sudden coughs up a condom. <laughs> Red chair, you can contact us via our website at this very uh, address. Uh, so I think that is it for tonight. Please say you thank you to my guest, St. Vincent! <laughs> Josh Gann! <laughs> Michelle Faber! <laughs> Jenny Depp! <laughs> Ken Judy Dench! <laughs> and to Kevin Branagh! <laughs> Join me next week with Sarah Tom.
Weber, Kelly Clarkson, comedians are Milliken, Aquaman, Jason Momoa, and the ever charming U Grant. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Now, Kate goes on a date with a handsome, funny guy who just happens to be a dad, but it's not an issue. Josh follows next here on Big Busy One.